615, highest on. KCMMA, team highest on. Back for grappling class now. All right, all right, 615. Grappling class. We're gonna do a little stand-up. I've been doing some stand-up warm-up squats because they're cool and they're fun. And we need to work stand-up. Also, we're gonna be working our grappling dummies. Uh, one that you made, or we're gonna, I'm gonna use one at the dojo here. So don't miss out on that. Start with some stand-up warm-ups today. A little step and over. Step and twist. These are my favorite sweeps to practice. I'm gonna do these all day long. And make you feel like you've done them all day long. Which is good sometimes. Got a little background music on to kind of relax the moment. Nice. And again, the more you do these, the less you think, and you just do the motion. I'm gonna step back and twist. There you go. Step back, twist. Step back and twist. Step back and twist. These videos are intended for KCMMA and Team Highest Time members. We will be back 6 1. Or 6 1, I wish. We'll be back 7 1. 7 1. 7 1. Can't wait to see everybody. That's it. Work it. Side motion. That's it. Work that footwork. Step, side work. Nice. Keep working it. That's it. Good job. Keep moving it. Keep moving it. There you go. Keep going. Keep going, a little step, boom. Remember, the idea is not to think, not to think, just do. I want you to do it. I mean, obviously you're thinking right now, stepping back, doing it. I'm gonna give you a side angle of this, a little slower, step and kick. That motion, grabbing the lapel, grabbing the sleeve, pulling that sleeve, pulling that sleeve and turn. Pull that sleeve and turn, nice. Next one. I'm gonna do a back up a little here. We're gonna go. You're grabbing your opponent, step, step, and kick the feet. Feet together. I was just watching some Judo Olympics from not last year's, <laughs> last Olympic, but the one further back, because we're supposed to have one this year, and it's going to next year, but one four years ago. I was watching this um, young lady from Russia. Phenomenal. She did this exact sweep. She did step, step, and bam, smacked those feet together and took her down. Yeah, nice setup. She's like one of the protégés. She's like 17 years old or something. It's phenomenal, just bam. Great throws. Of course she won, <laughs> of course. Isn't that amazing? She's barely enough to, not that old to compete, you get out there and you just dominate. And again, that's just, there's people doing it. Such a high level. I'm gonna go to the other side. There you go. Okay, step again. Now I'm gonna step twice this way. Get both of them in. Let's get them both in. Okay, get them both in. You hear that little scrape? That's the side of my foot scraping. All right, next one for footwork. We're gonna step back two steps. First one we pull. Okay, you're pulling. You're holding that lapel and the sleeve. Pull. Step, there you go, and that'll be your sweep. Okay, so again, one, two. Okay. If they push you on the side, same idea as a step, they're pushing you. Okay, you try the first one. If you don't like that first one, take another step on your own and do it. This can be done with three steps. Just to let you know too again, I'm gonna do a three-step one, okay? Watch, I wanna get over here because I know how to twist here. One, two, three. Now I'm throwing them on this side, way over here. You're taking them in a little circle, okay? It's good to mix it up. Sometimes you just take a step one, try it. Next time you go, one, two, try it. Next time you go, one, two, fake you out, three. All right, you mix it up. So far, we'll try the other side. Step one, step two, and there it is. Okay, ready? Step one, step two. I'll let you know on this particular one, I'm not stepping straight back. First time I'm stepping back straight. The second one, I'm stepping at a 90 degree turn, watch. And then that foot opens up, that leg. 
leg as it moves. You can see this leg is stepping back to match their leg. So they're stepping forward with that leg, I'm stepping back. Now the next leg comes because I'm pulling. And there's that leg. So if you're right next to your foot, it's a really neat two step. It gets that foot really close to your foot, so you just barely hit it. Just boom. Where a lot of the other sweeps, you gotta make this big sweep. This one, you're just right there. Oh, boom. Nice. Right, so again, one, two. Now I'm gonna do a three on this one. Okay, ready? One, two, three. And again, now you start flowing with it. Don't think about it. Okay, you're standing there like, oh, okay, I don't know. Okay, one. Okay, all right, good. Next time you're moving, one, two. There you go. Next time you're moving, one, two, three. Nice. Okay, it gives you the idea. You just want to do it and not think. All right, next one. This is our stand-up warm-up. Trying to have a little decent stand-up time here. I'm going to step back okay, and sweep. Now, I stopped it right there. There's a reason. The reason I stopped it is because I just hit their leg, and I mistimed it. I, I, I just didn't hit it right. I, w I waited too long. I was thinking too deep on the movement, and next thing you know, I'm stepping. Oh, I hit it. Now my next move. I'm going to attack the other leg. So I bounce off it, and I'm going to go down to this leg and kneel. And then it just comes to my next throw. So I'm tripping them with that leg. All right, so don't forget that. So I'm going to trip with the other leg. I call this the ricochet takedown. It's not called that. It's what I call it. Okay? It's actually an Osoto Gary, a big outside sweep Okay, with the front leg. Okay, so I step back, pull, sweep. Oh, hit his leg. I didn't pay attention. I wasn't doing it fast enough. As soon as I hit that and it doesn't move, I'm going to tap that other leg and I go right in there, around to it, and I'm going to throw down. My hands go that direction. Okay, so again, step. Oh, hit it. Kneel down, throw. So it's just another neat little way to do it. It's another combination there. You just got to think about it. Now, when you kneel down, go easy. If you're at home, you don't have a nice padded floor like we do, go easy. Don't bang your knees on the floor. All right, next stand-up warm-up. Again, you have to picture this person in front of you. I'm going to give you a side angle on this. I'm going to do it forward first, then a side angle to so get a little better angle. I'm grabbing the gi. I'm standing neutral. He pushes me. Okay? Pushes me. I didn't think sweep quick enough. I'm already stepped, he's already stepped. Next move, here, under his arm, here, soanage. Now if I follow my knees, it's a drop soanage. I can throw standing, I can throw kneeling, okay? Lots of versions, so I'm gonna give you a side angle here. Standing, pushes me. I missed my sweep, oh, I didn't move. Right to that arm, drop, lift, Footwork. Imagine that opponent grabbing, pushing. One. Boom. Now, can you do the setup for the sweep on this? Yes. I'm going to give you a forward motion. I'm standing here. They stop, push me, I sweep. I missed. And I just drop right in. So I can actually set this throw up with the foot sweep. Why not? If you like, you know, if I'm constantly doing foot sweeps, left and right, trying different sweeps on them, after you hit them a couple times, they ignore it because they don't think you can do it. So guess what? You're setting them up on purpose. They're pushing you, you hit it, and then you're gonna rotate right in, and then throw. Side angle. Step, sweep, missed. So a nage, oh, that's a standing one. Or drop to your knees, do the drop solenoid. Okay. Now, key wise, you can hold a sleeve, you can grab your lapel, you can hold on to the lapel as I step and do this, and I can take my elbow right up underneath, switch that foot, lift, throw, or drop down on my knee. Okay. Or hand position again, step, pull, try to sweep, miss. I mean, I, I would say try to do the sweep really. If you get it, awesome. If you don't get it, not a big deal. You 
just take that as you bang on it and you hit it, you turn, this hand comes up underneath the armpit area, up here high, bending your legs, lifting, and over. Okay? Make sure if you're working with a partner, you're careful. Um, you don't want to throw somebody wrong if they don't know how to fall. It hurts if you fall wrong, believe me. It does not feel good, so make sure you fall properly. So this is uh, some stand-up ones. I'm going to give you another angle on the other side through the other leg. Standing here, step, I try to sweep. I miss the sweep. I try, I go for the sweep 100%. I miss, all I'm going to do is take the hand up like this. Grab, legs are bending. My feet are together on the same plane. Lift my hips up and rotate over and throw. And I want to look, I want to look where I'm throwing you. So if I'm throwing, for instance, straight to the ground, this direction, I want to look that way. If I'm throwing over here, I want to look over here down. I want to look always where you throw. It helps you throw. So it's only important to kind of figure out how you're doing that. All right, so let's do it again. Uh, I believe this side, yes. Next step, nothing. Switch up to the armpit. Here, lift, roll. All right, nice warm-up so far, KCMMA, nice warm-up. That warm-up became like a workout almost. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, so we are going to talk today a little bit about gripping. Gripping. Gripping, gripping, gripping. All right. And I get a little closer here to my friend. All right, so we're going to look at gripping here. As I was talking about the throws earlier, you want to take your fingers grab in here with these parts. The main thing are these three. This fourth one is actually a hindrance to you. These three are your workers. Okay, so grab in there the three. The fourth one's kind of going to hang out just a little and you rotate in. That's your arm sleeve pull. Preferably just a little higher than the elbow. I'm taking my hand, grabbing these three, the little fingers off to the side and I rotate in to get that key tight. That's being just above the elbow. Now, if I'm doing that same grip on the bottom sleeve, down by the wrist, same idea. Three fingers, rotate in. Okay, so that's another grip. That's for different types where you wanna grab. Next one, you can actually bunch up the key. All right, you basically take their sleeve and you grab it and you bunch it up and hold on to it. Another way to control it a little bit. It's not quite as good, but it does work for a grip. So you got these simple grips. It's two to practice. High, low, bunch. All right? Now let's talk about lapel grabs. When you're grabbing a lapel again, these three fingers. Fourth finger, it actually makes your grip weaker. It doesn't make any sense. You have to try it to understand what I mean. Just doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna grab one of these three, and the fourth one's just gonna kind of like float. I'm gonna exaggerate it so you can see it right there, it's not grabbing. And then I'm gonna hold on to that lapel. You can have it behind, but I'm, when I'm grabbing with all four of them back there, this one's not really squeezing. These three are squeezing. Okay, so let's talk about that grip. Boom. Okay, that's a grip there. Do it on the other side, same thing. I'm gonna stick that figure out and show you. I don't want you to have your finger out like this to break it. I just want to show you that the three are holding. Three are holding right there. Four is just sitting. You saw this finger or you felt it, you feel it barely doing anything. It's really not doing anything, you're just kind of sitting there. Alright, that's important for grips. Grips help. That grip is on the gi, anywhere you want on the gi, that same grip. Now, where you grab on the gi might apply to what technique you're going to do. If I'm grabbing up high here, I'm thinking gi choke or X choke, okay? And again, same grips apply. When I'm grabbing this with this, like this, inside grip, inside, my left index finger, my index finger is not really grabbing hard. If I grab real hard on the index finger, all the weight transfers to that one finger and these ones relax. It's physics, hard to explain, except it's physics, <laughs> okay? You grab on with that one finger, you're gonna think, oh, I'm strong. These are your strong ones. It doesn't make any sense, that other finger. If I just took that finger off, I wouldn't need that to do these techniques, okay? 
but I don't want you to type your finger out like that and hurt it. I want to show you what you what you're focusing in on that grip. Okay. Reading grips are important. This is just some grip work today. You want to make sure when you grab, or when they grab you, if they grab you, don't sit there too long. I mean, the longer you sit, the more they're setting you up for the next move. So if they're grabbing here, they're thinking some kind of choke, gee choke. All right, they're grabbing back here, some type of gee choke again, loop choke, so forth, okay? These should be running red flags. If he cross grabs like this, it means some kind of advanced choke again. He's doing some kind of choke whip. He's probably just gonna reach up here and choke you. Yeah. Okay, I'll show you what I did on this side. I'm grabbing here, crossed. You're not really technically supposed to cross your body, but this is to set up for a move. Here, come across, grab the shoulder. I pull in for a choke. Okay, I'm saying shoulder, I'm talking the gi part of the shoulder. You want to just physically grab the shoulder. You want to physically grab that gi. When I'm grabbing that gi, I'm using that same grip. I'm grabbing on with three. And that little finger, I'm going to exaggerate it, but don't do this. Point it up, you know, that's what you're holding on to. That finger, it just sits in there. The back three and the thumb do the work, and the, and the palm itself. Okay? So very important in grips. Recognizing what your opponent does. Grip, grip, grip. Okay, very important. Um, and again, this is, I, I'm just doing it sitting so you can see a little better. This is dummy, I, mean, I can't stand straight up. So kind of demonstrating at this level. All right, next one. I'm gonna cross grab here. Okay, cross grab to his gi. Now, if you wanna do something tricky, is it, you don't wanna necessarily, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can get away with this if you grab a pie, but you have to react pretty quickly. A lot of times I'll grab low to mess with them. It just, they don't think you got anything. When you grab down here, in their mind, there's nothing you can do in their mind. There's things you can do, always something you can do, okay? I like the, like, it's kind of like when someone passes your guard and you let them pass your guard. If you're letting them pass your guard, there should be some move intended to do. So, you know, um, why am I passing my guard? He's passing my guard? Because I want to do a move while he's passing it. Same thing applies here. If you're grabbing for some reason, you should have a purpose. And that's where people get lost in grappling. They just hold on. I'm gonna grab it up here. Try to control up here. What move are you gonna do on the shoulder here? Or on the uh, tricep area here? What move are you gonna do? Well, I don't know. Well, then why are you grabbing like that? It's the same thing when you spar. Why are you just throwing your punch out there? You should be aiming at a place. Oh, that makes sense. Or aiming at their head. What part of the head are you aiming at? The same thing applies to grappling. There's a reason you're doing all of these moves. What is the reason? You gotta know why I'm grabbing, okay? Uh, here's kind of a neat little trick too. Remember how we grabbed like this over here, right, at Pi? All right? This is say we're standing, but we're just sitting down right now. I'm gonna use my other side here and grab there. I'm gonna take two on one and pull. Use it as an arm drag. Grab out there, okay? Before he gets his hand over and grabs you, you grab there, there, and pull, arm drag. Okay, pull him right off balance. Two on one. Now, if he grabs you here, and you have these moves, it's a lot harder to do. So, you need to set up your initial grab up high on there. Grab that other wrist area, and pull. Pull. All right, you gotta set it up. You gotta be the attacker on this move. You gotta grab, grab and drag. If you grab and wait, his next move is here. They control you. You're asking for them. Since he grabs you, now it changes the game. Pretty simple. Don't want to change the game. Very good. So, let's go to a little guard position. Back up and touch here. Good right there, nice. So remember, have reasons why you grab the gi. Remember, if you missed the video, you can always go back and watch it again. Always on Facebook, okay? So we're in the guard here, okay? Now, let's say to ourselves, why are we in the guard? And why are our legs hooked or why are they not hooked? This is just technical stuff to think about. 
If I'm gonna hook my legs and rock, lock them around, what is my intent? My intent is to do what? Arm bar? Well, you don't do an arm bar with your legs locked. Okay, what's your intent? Well, I don't know, what's, your, what's another answer? Uh, you don't want to break your passion guard. Okay, how long is that gonna work? Guy's really strong, got bony elbows. We know those guys, bony elbow guys. They pull them in and all of a sudden your leg's gone and they pass. Okay, if you're gonna lock your legs around this opponent, there's a reason. Okay, and you need to figure out what your reason is. Everybody has different reasons. But I lock my legs to control the person for a second or two. I'm not, my goal is not to hold you here for 10 minutes. In real life, they will break your face. I don't care, you hold somebody there and squeeze, they punch you in the face, and you're done in real life, okay, for grappling. Okay, now, sport, different. But still, sport, you're not getting any, you know, you're just laying there. It's gonna be like the most boring grappling match I've ever saw in my life, and you're stalling, okay? So, and if somebody else doesn't like it from another school, okay, whatever, man. we don't grapple that way, sorry. Okay, so I'm here, I hold for a while, and what I wanna do, if this guy's posturing up, I wanna try to break his balance with my legs. If I've got my legs in a closed guard, I'm going to try to break his balance. And I want to break his balance by using my legs and my arms. I'm going to pull his arms, and I can't get him loose. But when I pull with my legs, he comes forward. So I want to utilize his legs to pull him off base. Okay? If you grab with me, I'll be here for a few seconds. Then I'm open guard, closed guard, crunch guard, butterfly guard. I'm, I'm kind of bouncing all over because I'm trying to confuse you. You don't know what move I'm going to attack with. If I stay there too long, then it's like, okay, well, I figured it out. Right? And also, my theory is this. If I hold you there, and you're the strongest guy in class, I bet you're going to get out of my guard. Unless I've practiced this for 30 years, holding, and get all those nerves dead in there. Sorry, not me. Okay? Plus, I don't like this for street-wise, because this is going to get your face broke for street. All right? Martial arts all comes down to one thing. We're using it for life. All right? I mean, laying on your back on the ground, it's crazy. I've gotten put here on accident, so let's figure out how to deal with it. That's what we're dealing with, okay? And that's what you want to think, okay? So I'm here, my legs are locked. I need to think, what, what is my opportunity now? Maybe one of my opportunities is to get him, he's posturing up. I want to try to break his posture. So I'm trying to pull his arms out, but I can't completely pull him out because he's strong holding my belt. Now I pull forward. Now I can attack this arm. Now I can attack his arm. Why? His arms are over here on the side of me. Now I can open that guard and go right to my Komori. Okay? So, my intent with this guard, just at this moment, I can use it for other things. I just don't have to go to a Komori. Um, I'm just using it as an example. Okay? Just as an example. So if I'm going to hold this, I need to make a plan. What's my plan? Let's think of my plan right now. How long do I dare hold this before they get out? Okay. Hmm. Okay, if I wait too long, game's over, they're out, okay? So I'm here, I'm thinking, okay, I got my move. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna do Komori, what you said, right? So I pull my legs and push those arms out. Drop that leg, rotate my body, grab that right to Komori. He starts straightening the arm, right to arm bar. Okay, so that's so how you doing. Glory, he straightens the arm, arm bar, just like we've done before. So you gotta think why you're doing these moves, okay? Why am I pulling or pushing? Why am I holding? Okay, if I'm holding just for a second to think of my next move, well, the holding might be, hey, I'm catching my breath for a second. What do I wanna do next? Okay? I'm here trying to get you to do something. And then when you do that motion I like, or what I want you to do, then I'm gonna do my motion, okay? If you just lay here like this, and you don't move, it's a hard person to grapple. I gotta be really mean to you, to beat you, okay? And I'm not gonna do that in class, okay? Problem. I shouldn't say I won't ever. But a lot of people hold, okay? Now, here's another look at this. I'm here, and this guy's head's down. He wrestled. He wrestled. There's nothing wrong with wrestling. I recommend if you went to school and you wrestled, awesome, because it's going to help your grappling. 
there's lots of great benefits from wrestling. I wrestled in uh, middle school and high school a little bit. Just something to learn. I knew I had to learn one more element, you know, just one more thing than just kicking a bunch. Then I was introduced to Sambo. New world. <laughs> Sambo, Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, opposite of wrestling. Totally opposite of wrestling. Everything's backwards, okay? Okay, so, and I'm not saying wrestling's not good. I'm saying there's lots of great, great attributes from wrestling. So the person has their head down, and their arms are kind of around you here, okay? And you're, you can even be closed guard or whatever you want to do, okay? But they're kind of holding you here. And you got to remember, they're holding you here. What are they doing? They're holding you here. Are they submitting you? No. They're just holding you there, okay? So take your time. If you want them to move, give them something. If I keep him locked in here and he holds me, is he gonna move? Probably not. But if I open up that guard, right, he's gonna feel freedom that he can set up. He can try to move forward. Also, when I open up my guard, now I've lost, not in a bad way, but I've lost my restriction. I'm restricted how I move with this guard. I can only move so many ways. I drop this down, my hips, my shrimps, all this stuff can move so much easier. All right, so I'm here. I can push on the head sideways. Push, as I'm pushing, I buck up and I shrimp out. Now I slide my knee in here. All right, so let's look at that one more time. And it's gonna be a night, folks. Okay, so this wrestler, I can call him a wrestler. I was a wrestler, so I can say it, I guess. So when someone says, you hate wrestlers, no, I wrestled. All right, so I'm here. He's just holding me tight, head down. I can't break him loose. Let go with your legs. You want to offer them something. Offer them something. You want them to move. If you keep everything tight, 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 and he's tied to you, he's never going to let go. He's going to hold or she's going to hold, right? So I'm doing this, and I'm just waiting for them to let go of just a little bit with their grip. So now I can buck up, push on that head, shrimp out, get that knee in there. Now I got a knee in there. Now I'm in a half guard, crunch guard, or I'm in a scissors type guard coming up here. Different ways of looking at it, different names for these guards. So I'm in there with my knee. Now he's gonna try to pass on the outside, either side. But you get the idea, you wanna do things to set things up. So that's what we're looking to do, okay? Make motion. And the way you make motion is do it in a positive way. Okay, so it's kind of deep. I apologize, it's kind of deep. But you understand when you start relaxing and making reasons for why you do these moves. Good class, everybody. I'll see you Wednesday. And uh, hopefully you're all tuning in. Can't wait to see you guys July 1st. I hope that's the magic day to get everybody back here and have a great time. Good seeing everybody. Jamata.